Hi guys, welcome to Bite Size Excel. In this video, we are going to be taking an introductory look at the ribbon in Excel. The ribbon appears as this banner at the top of your window in Excel, and it's laid out in a number of different tabs, each with groups with various commands in it. Essentially, the ribbon is a tool to allow you to quickly navigate through various things that you might like to do in Excel. And I'm going to quickly walk you through each of the tabs and what's contained on them as standard. Uh, another point to note is just above the ribbon up here in the top left hand corner of your spreadsheet, you have the quick access toolbar, which uh, by default tends to contain your save, your auto save, your undo and redo buttons. You can actually customize your quick access toolbar by clicking on the little drop down arrow and selecting a number of different options here or you can right click anywhere on your ribbon, go to customize quick access toolbar, and you can select any command that you regularly use and add it into your list, or equally click on any of the ones that are in your list and click remove. And that will, uh, that will appear no matter which tab you are on and allows you to access some of your most used commands. Now running through your ribbon, your home tab contains probably what will be the most commonly used commands in Excel. So it starts with your clipboard, so your cut copy, uh, your various paste special options, then moves on to your font. So being able to adjust your font, making it bold, italic, underline, changing the color of the background of your cells, or equally changing your font color. You can also adjust the font, the size, and so on and so forth. Your alignment tabs contains all your cell alignment options. So if we type something in our cell, we can then align it the right center, left of the cell. We can also indent it or outdent it. The number group in your home tab allows you to format your numbers. And then we've got a range of different styles and formatting options. There's also a number of options for inserting and removing rows, new cells, formatting your cells, and then a couple of quick editing options, which you can also find a number of these on other tabs, but things like your auto sum, uh, filling data down or across, um, and clearing things like formatting or contents. There's also a find and select tool if you're looking for something in your spreadsheet. And your basic sort and filter options can also be found here, as well as on one of the later tabs. Moving on to the insert tab, this is where you're able to insert your pivot tables or just a normal table, input illustrations, uh, smart art, shapes, pictures. There's a number of different add in options. And then, probably something that most people will use quite a bit in Excel is this charts group which allows you to add all different sorts of charts to visualize your data. You've then got a number of different options, which we'll look at in some later videos around things like spark lines, options for filtering, adding in links to your data. And then there's a number of different options around text, such as adding a text box over above your worksheet, adding in word art, signature lines, or various other objects. This is also where you find the options to add in things like special characters and symbols and equations. Your page layout tab is where you find your options for changing your theme or your default spreadsheet colors. Page setup options, which allows you to set up your page so that it can be printed or visualized easily. Obviously about scaling of your spreadsheet on a particular page. Options to look at viewing your grid lines or your heading tabs, depending on how you want the, your spreadsheet to look. This can be useful if you create a tool. For example, you want to hide your headings and your grid lines. So your tool is visually more appealing for users. And there's a number of options for arranging objects within your spreadsheet. The formulas tab on your ribbon creates the option to put in a number of different functions, create formulas out of them. Um, there is a function library that allows you to search for particular things you want to do. It appears with the most commonly used ones, but you can obviously search for anything in particular that you might want to do. 
It also allows you to define your cell names. We'll come on to this in a later video. And it gives you a number of options for auditing your formulas or how they are going to calculate. Your data tab gives you options about getting data from external documents, such as maybe Word documents, PDFs from the web, or from tables or other spreadsheets. There are various options for refreshing your data, uh, particularly where it's linked through to either other parts of this spreadsheet or other spreadsheets. Uh, also where you have a pivot table and may want to refresh that. Your sorting and filtering allows you to sort data. And then there's a number of different data tools to help you manage your data better. There are also options for further analysis, as well as visualizing your data by grouping or ungrouping it. The review tab on the ribbon creates a number of different proofing um, and review options. So if you are reviewing somebody else's spreadsheet or want to add in comments on your own, this is where you will find all these options. It also gives you a range of options for protecting your worksheet or your workbook. So if it's been used by multiple users, you can reduce the risk of errors creeping in. The view tab gives a range of options for visualizing your data. So how you want to look, whether you want to look in page view or just like a normal spreadsheet, what you want to appear, whether you want your headings, or your grid lines to appear similar to on a previous page. So you can actually customize the view of your spreadsheet so it looks the way you want it to look. A number of different zoom options, options for freezing your panes or arranging windows so that you can visualize multiple data sets better or large data sets better. And then finally, but certainly not least, there is a help tab where you can get further support uh, or look up various queries that you might have. Clicking on help will open a sidebar where you can search for any queries that you might have. Also on the tabs at the top, there is the backstage view if you hit on file, which brings you over to the sheet where you can open a new document, save your documents, print it, share it, export it, and so on. There's also further options so you can customize Excel so it works best for you. Now this is just a whistle stop tour through the ribbon and what's contained in each tab. Future videos are gonna look at a lot of these elements in more detail. Another thing that's useful to know is you can collapse your ribbon. So clicking on this little arrow here and then to expand it again, you click on any one of your tabs. Obviously, if you click out at the moment, it will just disappear again. So to pin it again, we come to this little pin in the right hand corner, click it and it will stay put. A final point just to note for now is that you can customize your ribbon. So by right clicking anywhere on your ribbon, you can click customize the ribbon and you can create new tabs or rename existing tabs and what actually appears in each of those tabs. This can be useful if you're using spreadsheets for very particular purposes and are always using the same commands. You can select how you want things to appear. There are some hidden tabs such as draw and developer that you can select. And then if you look, these are now displayed in your tabs. Your draw contains a number of tools to help mark up your spreadsheet and your developer contains a range of options around things like macros. So again, this was just a whistle stop tour around the ribbon, just to give you an understanding of how you can use it to navigate through Excel. We are going to look in future videos in a lot more detail at all the options that I've briefly touched on today. If there are any particular areas of interest, do let me know in a comment, and I do look forward to seeing you on the next video.